Game Coordinator at MIA once again uh, with our second installment of our Skype chat series. I'm very, very happy today to be talking to Lakuluk Williamson Bathory, who is the Executive Director of Kagiavut, uh, a society for a Nunavut Performing Arts um, Center. So, let's get started. Um, can you tell me a little bit about <laughs> Kagiavut's um, goal and how you got started? Sure. Um, well, maybe I can start with what Kagiavut means because it's a, it's a long, complicated word and it's easy to wrap your head around it once, once you know what it means. That sounds great. Um, it's a, it's a, an old term mm -hmm. and it dates back from the times when uh, Inuit lived in communities out on the land and uh, in the wintertime they would uh, come together when it was easiest to travel quickly on the snow they'd come together and build these giant giant igloos uh, to hold performances in. And these, perf these uh, performance halls were called Qaggid. So in the process of building the Qaggid, once it was ready and everything was ready inside for the performance to begin, somebody would yell out kind of like a town crier sort of a thing. They'd say, Qaggid! And everybody would come into the Qaggid for the performance. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's, that's uh, where the name of our society comes from. Mm -hmm. And um, so your goal as a society is, I'll let you sort of explain. Sure. Yeah, we are a society um, built up mostly from performing artists that are from Nunavut. Uh, and we uh, intend to build a performing arts center here in Nakaluid. And we've got several reasons for doing this in the first place. Um, Nunavut uh, and Inuit do not have a space uh, to perform in, a performing arts space to call our own. Right. Uh, uh, we perform in, you know, parish halls and school gyms and foyers and arenas, you know, whatever space is around. But there isn't a dedicated space to really appreciate and, um, and nurture the amazing performing arts that we have all across the territory. And um, what, the, what we have found out is that Nunavut is, or Iqaluit is the only capital in all of Canada that doesn't have a performing arts center. Right. And yeah, it's also the only city in the whole of the circumpolar world that doesn't have its own performing arts center. Wow. Mm -hmm. And uh, for every other city in the circumpolar uh, area, the Performing Arts Centre is always like that beacon of, mm -hmm. of beauty and, and a destination and, you know, a central place for, for culture and society to gather. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when did you get started? Um, we started uh, with the brainstorming phase uh, about a year and a half ago mm -hmm. where um, our chair Ellen Hamilton and a few other people um, just called people from the community uh, to come together and say what do we want, what do we need and what should we do. Mm -hmm. So it all started about a year and a half ago and since then we've gotten society status and we've gotten um, some funding to start doing some projects and we're really we're really starting to pick up our pace now. Yeah, that's wonderful. Um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> can you explain a bit for people who don't know uh, about the history of performing arts in Inuit culture, um, why they're so important? Okay, well, um, as, as probably most people know, Inuit culture is a, a, an oral culture to begin with. Um, Things, of course, have been changing the past couple hundred years with um, becoming a more literate culture as well. But uh, Inuit take great pride in, in having that orality. And that means having, uh, at times, extreme precision about uh, being able to speak to history. Mm -hmm. For example, where my family comes from in, in Greenland, we have stories... Uh, very specific ways of telling stories about when uh, Inuit and Vikings came together um, in southern Greenland. And uh, as it turns out, the way that we've told these stories uh, are uh, compatible with, with what the archaeological evidence is and the, uh, you know, the Viking history that was written down in Europe. So mm -hmm. our oral tradition is very important and very strong. So that's one of the, the mainstays of, of uh, Inuit performance, most definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, 
drum dancing and singing and all of these uh, throat singing and all these kind of things are, of course, integral as well. Mm -hmm. But also very important to our history in performing arts is that a lot of our performing art was um, forced to go underground during the colonial era when uh, missionaries and colonial administrators thought that um, what Inuit were doing to perform and to to keep uh, a cultural space open to themselves was evil or unnecessary or uh, somehow uncivilized. So a lot of what we do now is this revitalization and uh, taking back what was always ours. Yeah, I, that's amazing. Um, and speaking a little bit about what kinds of um, revitalization is happening, it seems like to me, um, and I'm not you know, an expert in the performing arts by any means, but that the sort of floodgates have opened and the range of performing arts being like happening in Nunavut is so wide. Uh, for example, I was just reading in Nunatsiaq News um, about Nelson Taguna and creating throat wrapping, which sounds amazing That's right. to me. Uh, so can you just give a little bit of information about the range of performing arts that's happening today? Sure. Yeah, as you mentioned, we have um, quite a vibrant hip-hop movement here that that uh, brings together Inuktitut language along with throat singing and throat boxing and throat rapping and all those kind of things that are coming together. Mm -hmm. um, very innovative things to uh, elders teaching um, ayaya songs that they had learned as children and were are bringing back to uh, to um, you know to a natural life again today. So and. Things like um, last week we had a concert with uh, the National Arts Center and so what they did was they sent their brass trio up and they're the most eminent brass players in Canada and they belong to the orchestra that belongs to the Canadian public, right? Right. And they um, took music, uh, they took uh, the music from uh, a traditional Ayaya song and, and arranged it so that they could play it. So here oh. we have the most eminent Western classical tradition taking Ayaya music and, and uh, collaborating with Inuit artists to perform it. That so we have amazing. this huge range of, of uh, very traditional activity mm -hmm. to very innovative activity going on. Yeah, that's amazing. It sounds like that would be mm -hmm. so interesting to hear too. Um, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so how many members do, does your society currently have? Well, we have, uh, I'm the, um, the sole uh, staff person at the moment, and we have mm, six, six, nine people on our board, mm -hmm. and these are all people that are based in the Qadrid because we need to have people that are able to meet on a fairly regular basis about everything from fundraising to design um, here in the Qadrid. Right. But we also have an advisory council that consists of uh, performing artists from all over Nunavut mm -hmm. and these are elders and emerging artists and all different sorts of uh, genres of performing artists um, that uh, yeah there's about 15 of them that uh, we ask on a regular basis for their advice uh, yeah. on what they need as community members and what they'd like to input as um, experts in culture and, and language yeah, that's true. and then we have um, we also have an audience uh, for our performing for our performances that range from you know fifty to a couple hundred whenever we put together shows. Yeah, that's wonderful. So, how do you envision a performing cent art center sort of looking and functioning in Nunavut um, when you accomplish your goals? Um, what we are uh, projecting now is that uh, it would be wonderful to have uh, an operational space by 2017. Okay. And it's, it's quite ambitious to have that kind of a num like that date, but um, we gather from uh, other examples around Canada and around the world that the, the more momentum there is, the easier it is to build it. That's true. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we have... Um, we're hoping to get our feasibility study underway uh, this this uh, year, mm -hmm. um, and with the results of that feasibility study, we're going to be able to launch our uh, national fundraising campaign and all those kind of things. 
and the, the feasibility study will let us know wh where in Iqaluit is the best place to um, have a space and who to collaborate with to build it and what our fundraising strategy is going to look like and those kind of things. Yeah. But the basic ideas that we have for the space is that first of all it has to be beautiful <laughs> and it has to be state of the art and it has to serve the community. Yeah, it has to be able to um, accommodate rehearsal space, you know, nurturing of the art space, mm -hmm. uh, recording space, um, and kind of multifunctional space so that we can have everything from, you know, craft fairs to conventions to gala dinners in there, that kind of a thing. That sounds like an amazing and, uh, place. <laughs> yeah, and the uh, bringing back the whole idea of the Qaggiq, the traditional performance hall, of course, is you know, the huge domed igloo. Mm -hmm. And we have other ideas like when you when you step into an igloo, you crawl down mm -hmm. and then you crawl up so that you have that cold trap to right. come through. So right. that we thought it would be, um, these are all just brainstorming ideas, yeah. but wouldn't it be lovely to be able to actually go physically through a cultural space like that to get into, into a girl. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That sounds so amazing. Um, and I know you've already kind of touched on this, but I really want to sort of draw it out a little bit more. Um, you said that for other cities in the circumpolar world, uh, the performing arts centers are like a beacon uh, where people go and they sort of come together. Um, what kind of impact do you think having a performing arts center in Iqaluit would have on the community? Um, it's actually uh, wide ranging. It'll be everything from uh, educational impact where We'll have a space where um, Inuit and Nunavumi can learn performing arts, mm -hmm. uh, and not just uh, how to be a performer, but also um, how to support the performing arts, like set design and light design and sound design and all those kind of things. It'll be a learning space, mm -hmm. and it'll also be a source of employment because people will have to run the space. And also, it'll be a huge source of uh, uh, tourism where you know, like everybody knows the Sydney Opera House or everybody knows the Hummingbird Centre in, in Toronto. It's a place to go to. Yeah, that's amazing.